display allows you to show lyrics and other information on an additional display that's meant only for the people who are on your stage. Now you can customize this display to show things that are helpful like clocks and what's coming next, core charts, and you can even integrate this with Planning Center Online's live mode. Now this does require an additional output from your computer, and newer Macs come with two Thunderbolt ports, so you can utilize that second Thunderbolt port for this stage display. Now if you don't have an additional output from your computer, you can pick up an inexpensive display adapter from the Renewed Vision Store to add this additional output. You also have the option of using the iPhone or iPad stage display app to view your stage display. That way you can view it on your device or you can grab some additional cabling that allows you to take the video output from your device and put it on something like an HDTV. This is really powerful because it allows you to set up a wireless stage display without the need to run new cabling. Now before we actually enable our stage display, let's make sure it's showing on the correct display. So we're going to go to Pro Presenter and Preferences, and under the Display tab, you can see we can enable stage display. Now when I enable this, it's going to show over top of our control display. That's because right now it's set to this screen. Now most likely you're seeing three screens right now if you're using stage display because you're going to need a control screen, an output, and a stage display. Now I only have two for this demonstration, but I can move my stage display to any of the other screens that I have. So I'm gonna move it to this secondary output and it will now show on that display. Now let's move my output to my main display, but I'm not worried about that for this demonstration. So now I can enable stage display and now it's showing on my secondary display. Now that we've enabled it, we can start configuring our stage display layout. Now I can click on this handy button here, but most of the time you'll probably go to Window and down to Configure Stage Display or use Command 4. Now in here we can actually configure the layout of this and move items around or resize them. And over here we have all the items that we can add. So our first item is our current slide which is right now set to text only. We can also set this to a static slide and this will show us a static version of whatever's on our output. And if we want a live version of that we can set this to the live slide. So this will show a live duplicate of whatever's on our output. Now if I go back to text only we have some options here we can change the font size, font color, and we can even change the alignment of that text. Then we can also include slide notes because all slides in your documents have an area for notes and that's where that information would be shown. Now our next slide is pretty much the same except we can only do static slide or text only. There is no option for live slide for our next slide. Then we have an option for chord chart and that's showing right over here and our chord charts are any PDFs that we have attached to our documents or our slides can be shown on our stage display. This is handy for musicians. Next we have our clock and so we can show just a regular clock or we can show this video countdown that will be a countdown of any videos being played on the screen. Plus we have unlimited clocks inside ProPresenter and any clocks that you've created will show up in a list here and you can choose to enable those and change what color they're using. Then we have some options for our clocks. We can strip out leading zeros and if any of our clocks are set to overrun, we can set a specified color to bring more attention to the overrun. Then we can enable a message area where we can send messages to our stage display and we can have it flash a color to help bring attention to it. And then finally we can show borders and labels for all of our different items. If we turn this off we won't see the current slide, current slide notes, and the uh, borders around these items when you actually see it on your stage display. Then below here we have our Planning Center Live integration where we can integrate a clock from the Planning Center Live feature. Now if you want to know more about this please check out the Planning Center Online integration tutorial that goes into this in depth. Now let's look at a couple of the different layouts that I've created ahead of time. So we'll go up here to teaching and you'll see this layout here which has a nice large clock, an area for our message, and an elapsed timer. And then our current slide is set to a live slide preview. And then our next one is live slide and this shows a giant version of our output. So basically it turns our stage display into a duplicate of our output. Then for songs, I have one that just has a clock and it has our current slide with large text and our next slide with large text, but it's colored slightly different so we don't get confused as to what we're looking at. 
And then the last one that I created is a static slide version where it has a side-by-side -side view of our current and next slide, both set to static slide, and then we have a large message area at the bottom with a couple clocks up in the corner. Now we can either duplicate one of these or let's create a new one. So I'm gonna create a new layout and we're gonna name this layout our iPad layout. Now for this layout, I only want my current and next slide. So I'm just gonna disable all these different features that I don't need for this layout. And for our next slide, I wanna change the color of this to maybe yellow. So we'll set that to yellow. And now we can size these up. So I'm just gonna size this up a little bit here and we can move this down towards the bottom. So we can move this over and again, size this so it's in the right spot. We can move our current slide up here. And so now we have this nice large size here for our iPad layout. Now that we've created all these different layouts, let's actually utilize them at different times during our presentation. So we'll close out of this and I'm gonna open up my Q palette. So I'm gonna to go to view and down to Q palette, which allows us to add stage display cues. So let's go to this first song of this I believe and we'll add a stage display cue here to change the layout for the rest of our worship set to our songs layout. So we're done with that so we can add that in. Now this next song actually I don't want to show the lyrics on our output. I only want the people on stage to see them. So I'm going to add another stage display cue here and instead of changing the layout I'm going to set it to suppress slide on output. That way it doesn't show my slides on the output it only shows it on the stage display. And then I'm gonna add one more at the end of the song to enable slide on output so that our slides can resume showing on our actual output at the end of this song. And then let's go down to our teaching notes here and let's add one more cue here of maybe like our static slides and we'll hit done. So now let's see this in action. So I'm gonna flip over to my stage display preview here. I'm gonna to go to my first song. I'm gonna click on this and you'll see our layout changed. I can click through these slides and you'll see that it clicks along and shows us them. Now let's go to our next song. And when I click on our next uh, song here, you'll see this warning pop up. And if I flip over to our preview of our output, you'll see that nothing's here. And when I click on this next slide, you'll see that nothing's there still. But if I go to my stage display, you'll see all the text is showing there. Now when I click on this last slide, my warning's gonna go away. I'll flip over to my output and you'll see that if I would now click on something, you'll see it actually shows on that output. Now we can go to our teaching notes and I can click here and it will show my teaching notes. We'll see our stage display preview here and you'll see that it shows our static slide versions of these different things. So that's how you can trigger different layouts throughout your playlist. Now the last thing we might wanna do is send messages to our stage display and this is easy. So we just have to go to view and down to stage display control and in here we can send messages. So we can send a message of hello and we can hit send message. And now if I flip over to our preview, you'll see a giant flashing hello. And if I would change this to like hi and hit send message, you'll see it flashes there to get our attention that there's a message on that screen. So that's how easy it is to send a message. The last thing that I'll show you is where you can add chord charts and notes to your different slides. So we'll go to our editor. I'll close out of my cue palette here. To add a chord chart, we can go over here and we can add a chord chart right here. And if we wanna add any notes, we can add them right here. So it's all under the slide settings and we can add stage display notes that can show up when we show this slide.